Hi again, I'm John Deal. Today I'm going to show you how to document your work once it's been installed in a gallery. Um, I'm going to do that both with a DSLR camera uh, to show you what you can do with a professional setup. As well, I'm going to show you how to do that with just a cell phone camera and a camera app. First, let me tell you that I've got two. Let me put this down for a moment. So I've got two lights here, both LED um, soft boxes and I've got them roughly about you know 45 degrees position about 45 degrees from the painting uh, about six feet back and I'm trying to get a good wash of light across the surface of the piece uh, so that we can illuminate all of what's going on here now this obviously is just your your proverbial uh, uh, polar bear in a snowstorm um, or white on white as we like to call it um, I'm going to put on just a piece of cardstock to give it a bit of dimension so that when we go to focus on our subject, it's a little easier for us to see later. Um, I'm also going to have my DSLR, but I also have a tripod. A tripod is very important for doing this. Um, the reason for that is because when we're shooting our photo, the most important thing that we have is that we have a steady base for the camera to sit on. And the reason for that is because basically what I want to do is I want to be able to have as much depth of field in order to capture as much detail as possible in that painting or sculpture, what have you. Um, the way we do that is we have a low shutter speed and we have a, uh, a smaller aperture or a uh, an F16, F20, something in the in the higher range there that gives us a, a more kind of pinpoint uh, aperture and allows more crisp light to come through um, for the exposure. Um, so I guess with no with uh, no further ado, I'll set up the camera and we'll get uh, I'll start kind of going through um, what the camera settings are that I would like to have on my camera if I'm shooting uh, a, a, a painting in situ. Okay, so here we are. So I've got a little mount. I'm just going to stick my camera on there. Raise this up. I'm going to try and show you right off of the camera here. Show you all of the settings that I'm going to put in. Okay, and then we'll take a few shots. And uh, we'll go from there. Now let me just, I'm just going to put on that square I was talking about. It's a basic gesso canvas because um, I did prepare this earlier for the earlier video uh, and now I'm leaving it blank because my daughter has requested to be able to use it. Center that a bit more. Okay. Okay, so let's get to our camera. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to turn it on, obviously. Uh, I want to actually change it from program to manual. That will allow me to control the different um, exposure, the different uh, uh, f-stops and the shutter speed. So few things to note, my ISO is way down at 100. Um, the higher you go, the more grainy the image might look. So I like to set it at 100. I am also going to set my image quality to raw, large, fine. Okay. At this, okay, well, I guess at the same time we can set our white balance. You can see here it has auto white balance. So I'm going to change that now. It's a little tricky. So depending on the lights that you have, you'll get different kind of uh, temperature values. With tungsten lights, you'll get a warmer color. With Let me just make sure you can see that all right. hope that's in focus. Um, like I was saying, with tungsten lights, you'll get a warmer light. With LED lights or, or uh, fluorescence, you'll get a much cooler light. 
I have LEDs and they're daylight LEDs. So they're gonna be in the higher, you know, 4,800, 5,000 K. And that's the temperature value of your light. Um, what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna try and set my light balance to something that's gonna be in the range of what they are. And I think that's gonna be around daylight because they are technically, they say they are daylight bulbs. So let's go daylight. What I can do actually is I can show you the different, the differences. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Okay. So now when we look at our image, we can just quickly take a look. You can see it's quite dark. So let's go back, get our exposure values to change. So you can see I'm up at F20. And if I want, I can change that down to F16, which would be fine. And that's going to give me a fairly long exposure. This camera is, is nice in that you can look through the viewfinder to see your image. Now, I'm going to raise it up a little bit because it seems to be a bit low from center. Nice to have your camera pointing directly at the center of the work or close to it and we can avoid any kind of distortion we might get. But the other thing is I want to try and keep my camera lens close to 50. Now there's a little debate on this um, and it's kind of weird. I, I, I used to always say that 50, 50 millimeters for a lens focal depth is close to the human eye. At least that's what I understood at the time. But there's a lot of debate over that. Um, so if you can keep it within, you know, 35 to 50 millimeters, uh, it will reduce the amount of distortion that might happen. But when we get into post-production, I'm going to show you that Photoshop, if that's what you're using for your image editing, has a really easy way to um, correct lens distortion. And especially if we're, we're shooting with RAW, it'll also give you that option, uh, quite a few options there. So let's do this. We've got our settings. So again, I'm on manual. My shutter speed is pretty slow. My aperture is up around F16. My ISO is at 100. Okay. Right now, my white balance is set to daylight. Um, oh, one thing I forgot. So I don't want to have it on single shot because that's just going to shoot right when I hit the trigger. So I am going to change that to a two-second timer. That's because, for me, um, I like to just hit the trigger, get hands off, and then it can, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not touching the camera. There's no chance of me wiggling it and getting a blurry image. That's not what I want. And it's just going to cause more delays in my production. So the easiest thing for me to do is hit the trigger and hands off. Okay? Now, uh, so we're back to that. I've, I've got it at one shot. I've also got it kind of metered. Uh, my uh, uh, focus is going to go is going to spread across uh, the whole range, and that looks pretty good to me. Um, I am going to shoot this in portrait, so I'm going to turn the camera a little bit, and I'm going to do that just because it'll give me a, a better image. Now, here we'll show you. Whoops, I'll show you here. So. Okay. 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 So let's try our first image. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see we've got a pretty good balance there. Also, if you notice here, we've got a um, pretty good balance of shadows on either sides. We know that we've got a pretty decent blending of our lights. There's not too much on one side, not too much on the other. 
there are ways to correct that if you happen to make a mistake and uh, I will try and show you that when we get to it. So now I'm just going to show you a couple of well, the other white balance settings. We'll do one at tungsten. You can see it's a lot more blue. And then we can do one at uh, fluorescent. And still blue. So for me, I like the daylight, I think. And the shade might actually be the nicest one. Let's see. No, that's too yellow. So let's go back to our daylight. Okay. Now, one of the other things that I think is important here is I always like to shoot with a gray card. Okay. And that. Okay. And this is a gray card here. And this uh, gray card is a pretty standard value. So it's a set value that. Um, is used for all gray cards and when you go into your post-production again when you go into your curves or your levels you're gonna have three different droppers on the side uh, you're gonna have a white you're gonna have gray and you're gonna have a black what we're gonna do to actually adjust our white balance when we get into post-production is we're gonna use that gray dropper we're gonna select this to sample this value and then we're gonna use that to uh, adjust our white balance later on okay you can just take a shot with this in the frame as long as it has the same light values that the painting has or the artwork has, then this will give you a true reading when you get into your post-production, you get into your actual image editing software. Um, if I'm shooting a bunch of stuff, which uh, tends to happen sometimes if I'm doing a collection, then what I like to do is I'll just simply uh, pin it into the wall. Then I can stand back from it. I don't have to take a shot and then change it. Because lighting can change when you're doing a bunch of, a group of shots. Um, so if I have that in one place, or as long as I have it within the frame, so I have it over on the side here, so the light that's on that card right now is the same light that is on that painting. So with that, I'm going to take this shot. And I've got it in my frame, which means that I'm not going to have a problem uh, seeing it when I go into post-production. Now I am going to stop up and shoot an image overexposed and I'm going to also stop down and shoot one that is underexposed that will give me a range of images to choose from and that is that yeah that's that so now let me break out my highly sophisticated cell phone let me turn that off and i've just bought, i've just got one of these kind of uh cell phone holders for doing selfies or for doing videos, what have you. And I'm just going to clamp that to my tripod. Now, this is called, you can use any of these, but I found this one called ProCam Lite. Whoops. It looks pretty decent to me. Um, it has an auto ISO. I'm going to set the ISO to 100. It has an auto white balance. I'm going to set the white balance to sun again. We'll turn off the flash. We will set a three second timer. Okay. We've got it focused. Full disclosure. I did not end up using the image from this camera. The quality was less than I needed. I reshot the work using a newer phone, and that is the image that I will use in the end. 
I did keep the lighting the same, but I didn't use the app. That's not to say that these manual camera apps aren't a good idea, just to say that ultimately I didn't need it. Now the other thing I wanted to show you is that I know that I have um, these fancy lights, which they're not really fancy lights. We really just have um, some studio uh, soft boxes. They're decent, they're not super expensive. I think the whole kit was under uh, $200. So if, you're, if this is something you're gonna be doing long term, by all means, go out and buy them. However, when I was a student, I didn't have $200 to spend. And when I was a young artist, I didn't have $200 to spend on lights. What I did was I would just purchase lights like this, which is just a very simple $10 purchase at your hardware store, what have you, clamp light. I got myself a daylight bulb in here. It's a pretty decent light. And you'd set up the same way. So what you'd have is you'd have one over here set up, one over here set up, and they'd be um, casting light evenly across the surface. Uh, if we just pause for one minute, I'm gonna go and get a couple of chairs from my kitchen. I'm just gonna clamp them to the chairs, turn off the other lights, and we're gonna see how, how good I can get it, okay? So bear with me, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I've got my LED lights going still. I'm gonna turn on my store-bought, my, my uh, uh, clamp lights, my little cheapos, and we're gonna see if there's a big difference in the light value, okay? Let's turn off these lights. All right, so obviously we're not getting as much light, but we can adjust for that, no problem. We are getting a decent amount of spread, so our shadows are a little, they're okay, I think. This is maybe a little too close. Maybe it just needs to come back a little bit more. So that's good. So then with our camera here, with our phone camera, and our $10 hardware store lights, let's see how we do. Not too bad. It's not too bad. Now if you do find that they're a little too harsh because they're not... They're not softbox, so they don't have a lot of diffuse light. You might, in a, in a bright room, you might try and bounce them off the wall a little bit. Don't necessarily point them directly at the painting so that you're getting a bit more diffuse light. But I think we get a fairly decent uh, result. And we'll see when we get into post-production um, how good it really can be. So... Without any further ado, um, let's get these lights out so I look better. So with all that said, um, what I've been able to show you today, I hope you, you can take this away uh, just in this part. Um, with all that said, we have a few images that we can look at when we go into our post-production. We're going to take a look at um, how... Uh, how to then make any corrections that we need to make if the image is a little off or uh, what have you if we need to tweak it here or there maybe it's not perfectly square then we're going to go and we're going to deal with that in post-production and I'll see you on the flip side.